God for writing. My name is Jessica Flynn. I'm the MD um, for the event and I'm super excited to see everyone here today um, and hopefully be able to excite the girls on board this team. So we are expecting on the 18th of August about 1700 girls will join us here physically. Um, on the 18th of August they're going to arrive anywhere between 8 a.m. and 8 30 in the morning all the way and join us until 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So we are super excited to have them here. Some of them are coming from really far away. Um, and our aim is to ensure that they have an amazing experience with us, to be excited, enthused, and inspired by the career opportunities available in STEM, and to hopefully join us um, in the near future in our profession. So I'll hand you then over to Laura, who's gathered you all here today. Pretty much what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna, um, Obviously, first of all, go through um, one of the roles that we are going to be doing. So everybody that's come today, um, your role on the day will be as a girl guide. So that is probably our most important role on the day because that's the one that's actually getting the girls to their different sessions. So uh, um, we'll also then go for a tour of Deacon. So we'll show you all the areas where you will need to take the girls on the day as well. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll come back here and we'll do... Um, just put a bit of a, a couple of role plays of some of the, um, you know, how it will run on the day and the things that you need to do as well. And then we'll open it up at the end for any Q&A. So if there's any questions, that's a really good point to ask them there. Um, essentially, um, what the Girl Guides role is, it plays a key role in helping the girls transition from one session to the next. So uh, the Girl Guide volunteer will stay with the squad of girls um, for the make for the day, making sure that they get to all their sessions on time. So you'll get one of these flags on the day, which will be a colour-coded flag, and this will be relevant to both um, your stream and your girls. So there are four streams. So each stream is identified by the colour lanyard. So I know this is red, but there'll be the bright colours on the day. So there's going to be girls with yellow lanyards, black lanyards, <laughs> pink lanyards and white lanyards and there will be four different colours of flag there will be black pink yellow and white and there will also be a squad number on there so they will actually have an indication number so each stream um, so as I mentioned um, out of all the girls they're split into four streams which is pretty much how their stream matches the program of the day of what they're going to be doing and the areas they'll be in and then each stream is split further into squads which is identified by the number. So each number um, will have um, a squad of probably about 20 to 30 girls approximately. So that's how many you'll probably have in your squad that you'll be navigating during the day. Um, you'll know what squad you have on the morning of the day. So you won't have that allocation prior, but you will have that on the day. So what we will give you, and we will make sure you have available on the day so you will get a role description so um, we'll get this out to you in advance but that will just be what this role is pretty much everything that we're going through today and um, any kind of frequently asked questions as well will all be on that so you'll have that as part of your information pack and um, you'll also get an agenda for the day so what the girls and the rooms that they're going to be in where you're going to basically need to be and take them to You'll also get a map of Deacon, so don't worry if you don't remember everything today. Uh, we will provide you with a map to make sure that you can um, get to the different areas. We'll also provide you with emergency contact details, so for all the different supervisors and areas that you might need to reach out to if there is an issue. Um, and you'll also get have your flag um, as your identifier. So in terms of the actual day and how the day is going to run, um, so in the different squads, so black is um, girls that are in year five to six, white is year uh, five to six as well, pink will be year seven to eight, and yellow will be years nine to twelve. Um, for example, if you are in the black stream, the day will run where the girls will arrive in the morning from their coach drop-off points or their minibus drop-off points. You will then, their first session will then be the keynote, um, so they'll go into a keynote speaker um, session, then they'll go into workshops, then they'll go break for lunch, then they'll go into the trade show, and then after that they'll go into the super workshop. So there's four sessions that happen throughout the day, 
and obviously different streams, they're all not doing the same thing at the same time, so it is kind of um, staggered around as well. So when someone's in the keynote, someone will be in the super workshop, someone will be in the workshop, someone will be in the trade show. So we'll, everyone's in a different section. So you'll know where you need to be just based on the colour of the flag that you have. Yeah. Obviously, as Jess mentioned, there is 1,700 girls going to be here on the day. We have staggered the start times of when they're going to be arriving. So black and white stream will be arrived. The girls will be arriving pretty much at any time from around 8.30, 8.45. Um, and their first session starts at 9.45 and their last session finishes at 2.45. So they're going to start a bit earlier, finish a bit earlier. And then the other two streams, the pink and the yellow streams, they will be arriving approximately around 9.30 in the morning. Um, their first session starts at 10.30 and they finish at 3.15. On the actual day, um, we would like it if everyone can please wear all black. It just means that we can identify you as a volunteer as well. So if that's okay, or as close to black that you might have. Um, yeah, if everyone's okay to wear all black on the day. That so that's enough of me speaking for a moment. So what we're going to do now is just go for a bit of a tour of the um, of Deacon and where you're going to go. So um, this area here that you're in right now is the main area where the girls will be coming through. So they'll actually be coming through on the day through the main entrance here from the coach. And uh, I believe from this entrance here from the minibus. And then there could be girls coming from up above and uh, from the car park as well if they're in smaller numbers. Um, so if you all want to kind of follow me, I'll show you where basically when you arrive on the day, the first place you need to go. Basically come and say, hey, yep, yeah, I'm here and I'm, I'm here for the day. We'll check you off, we'll get an information pack to you, we'll get the uh, flag for your identifier to you as well. So this is where you'll pick up all your information for the day. Um, in between kind of all the different sessions, sorry, during the sessions, um, there is options whether you want to stay in the session with the girls and watch the workshop, watch the keynote, or you can actually come back here and take a break, grab a coffee, grab a drink. Um, lunch will also be in here on the day as well. So this is your area that you, um, while you're not escorting the girls to the different locations, and there isn't um, a requirement for you to be in the room, if you want to, you can just come back here and, and take a bit of a break. So you can leave any kind of things in here as well. So this is the first place that you'll be. Lunch, lunch and coffee, yes. Yeah. So there will be, co there'll be, yeah, you'll, you'll be fed. There'll be water, there'll be, um, there'll be information as well in this area as well around just in terms of the, the day, the program of the day, what's happening. So there'll also be people in here that if there's any questions, anything you're not sure about, you can ask. So this is really kind of your area. This area here is where we'll be assembling girls for the super workshop so if your first session of the day is the super workshop you pretty much need to come out here with your flag and we'll go through that um, a bit later when we go through the role play but essentially this is the area where if for a super workshop the girls will be be sent to this area for you to kind of grab your girls and um, so that's your squad number so then the girls will have numbers on these as well so you'll be able to identify on their lanyard what number they are so you'll know The lecture theatres um, that's going to be used, I think it's going to be used on the day. So um, it was good just to show you this because obviously there is going to be times that you might need to actually go out of that main building. So um, again, you'll probably get a map very similar to to this, um, and this will have pretty much all labelled. So against where you need to go for um, the different rooms and where they're located. So. Um, you will have a larger copy of this um, on the day. I'll also make sure that you've also got um, a copy of this sent to you um, in the information that we sent on an email um, a week before. So um, it's clearly labelled, so this was had a big X on it, and so this is where LT uh, top is. And so this is where a super workshop would held, and I believe the room capacity, do you know what the room capacity 
300. About 300, so um, this is where actually two streams um, will be, sorry, yeah. So, so if you recall from earlier, we have the, we, Laura mentioned that there's going to be 24, up to 24 squads in one stream. What we're going to do in this particular area is we're going to take about a third of the 24 squads, or about eight squads, and we're going to fit them in here. So, so there's going to be three of these running concurrently per stream. So depending on what stream color you've got, um, you may be able to so I just wanted to show everyone this area because this is essentially where the girls are going to be arriving on the day. So um, the majority of the girls are going to be arriving by coach. Um, I just thought it would be just good to give you an indication of what's actually happening. They're all going to be arriving down there and they'll be getting off the coaches. We've got, we'll have other volunteers which are in the bus liaison role. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to be getting the girls from the coach drop-off point and this building here undercover that's where the um the coach registration desk will be so there'll be a registration desk where they'll be picking up their lanyards getting checked off how many people have arrived versus how many were expected um and um yeah, thanks jess <laughs> and um and then what will happen then is that there'll be another um, volunteer on the bus liaison role, they'll then be getting them from this area, picking up girls only with lanyards and taking them into that main entrance, which we're going to head back to now. Uh, that's pretty much it for the tour of anywhere. I just thought this would be a good one, just so you know what I, the logistics of actually how these girls are getting to that point there. They're going to be doing this nice walk, getting all excited. So, um, yeah, it'll be quite fun on the day. Cool. Minibuses are coming from the other area, so the bus liaisons will be bringing them into the hub. So the registration desk from the minibuses will be indoors within the actual hub itself, because that will be a smaller number. These are going to be the bigger, larger numbers, which is why we've chosen outdoor area, because obviously with large coach numbers coming off, um, if they're coming down this route, it just means that we can keep it COVID safe as much as possible as well. We won't need to go into this room, but just so you're all aware, this is where all the speakers on the day, this is going to be their lounge, so this is where they'll all be located in between sessions. So just to show you all, just in case you ever do need to get in touch with any of the speakers, there'll also maybe potentially be people from the trade show in here as well. So this is where all our kind of sponsors and everyone will be located. Uh, you shouldn't need to go in there, but if you did need to, if they, for example, you're in a session and there's no speaker, they're probably going to be getting in touch with this room <laughs> to find out where they will be. On the day there will be a trade show so, oh, that's happening for the girls. This is going to be the location of the trade show. So um, when you're bringing the girls into their trade show session, you're bringing them into this area, which will, on the day, will have all different booths from all the different sponsors that we have and um, there will be a big ICT booth as well and um, I'll also introduce you to Alex so Alex is actually our trade show director and hey is uh, setting things up and um, um, yeah if you wanted to say I might yeah hi guys this is amazing having everyone here um, as Laura said I'm looking after the trade show what we are looking for here this is the the, the most fun is going to be had in here for everyone, <laughs> us included. So this is the place to be. Um, it's going to be set up with about 20, 25 booths of different sponsors. There's going to be some roving entertainment. Um, there's going to be some picture booths. It's heaps of fun things for the girls. If you're taking the girls into the workshops, this is where kind of there's workshops that's going to be available open on the day that they're going to be using, um, and this is kind of like what they look like and um, the room. And um, so it's bringing the girls into here, and then we've got various different sponsors that are providing talks on the day. And um, we just wanted to make sure that you've seen what it looks like and new kind of where. So you'll have um, on your agenda on the day, you'll get given what room you need to take the girls to um, and um, a bit of a navigation of where that is. So for example, on this one, this is HE2, which is HE level two, and then uh, this is room 12.
this is probably my favorite room. Um, this is the keynote room. Um, so um, pretty much in terms of those four streams that we spoke about earlier and obviously all the different squads, this is where all the squads within that one stream all come together uh, for one uh, for one of the, th the sessions in the program, which is the keynote. Um, the keynote is actually being given by um, our main sponsor, ANZ. So they're the ones that will be in here. Um, We'll go for, when we go through it in the role play uh, with the keynote, you can you do have the option to even come in and watch the keynote or um, to grab your girls at the end of the session because they're going to be sent straight into here when they arrive and um, if they're in that stream. So there'll be 24 squads potentially in this keynote at any one time with 20, 30 girls. So I think the room capacity here is about 650. 650. Um, so yeah. So yeah, if you... If if your if your squad is in here and you want to come listen to this, feel free to take a seat. There will absolutely be seats available, um, and A and Z will be doing some amazing sessions in here. So feel free to listen in if your squad happens to be in here as well. Yeah, but it, essentially, yeah, I think as we spoke about, it's really getting the girls in between, getting to the different areas, and making sure they get to this session on time. So while you're in the session, if you wanted to go back to the room, grab, could just go have a break, get a coffee, go to the bathroom. That's all things that you can do during during the actual session times because um, obviously the speakers are the ones that are going to be running the actual session. So you don't need to stress too much about that. Um, essentially on the day, um, your starting point is going to be based on the stream's first session. So, um, and I'll go through that in a sec, um, but during the sessions, as, I mean, as we've already spoken about, there's a 30 minute transfer window. So it's pretty much getting them from, whether that's from the keynote across to the trade show, so it's actually walking them across there. Um, but there is obviously more er different areas that can be a little bit more complex. So we'll go through, through, a, a, through a few scenarios, just so you can see, and then, then we'll open it all up to any questions and like the yeah, Q&A at the end for everyone. Um, uh, also, we'll just let you know as well what will happen post lunch time because during the lunch time, um, you'll obviously go back to the volunteers room, have a break, rise up for a share, do what you need to do. Um, all the uh, girls will be kind of going off and having their lunch as well. So there is going to be meet up points. Just an FYI as well, this stage here, um, we'll have um, people on the stage. So this can, we'll also be doing this as well to make sure that we're getting the girls back into the areas as well. So. First thing in the day, if your first session is a keynote, so on the program you'll either have your first session as a keynote, workshop, a trade show, or a super workshop. So if it's the keynote, which is in this building here, um, what will happen is, is that you can either go straight in the morning, straight into the keynote and stay in there with the girls. Um, they'll be going out of these two entrances here. There will be a registration desk here. Um, and the registration desk I showed you out there. They'll be coming into these entrances and what they'll be, there'll be a volunteer on each door, checking what number they've got, what street, um, what stream they are. If they're, for example, black stream, we know that they should be in the keynote. They'll be sent straight into the keynote on the morning. So you don't need to do anything to get to, to that first session if it's keynote. Um, what will happen is, is if you wanted to watch the keynote, you can just go straight in there for that session time. If not, then what you'll need to do is ensure that you're down here, uh, outside this area, in this area here, uh, about 10, 15 minutes um, before that keynote is due to finish. And what will happen is, is that the girls will be called out of the keynote by squad number. So they should come out in some sort of order. Obviously, there will be slight movements around. I'd like to think they'll come out in, the, in an elderly fashion. That's probably when you've got young girls, maybe not so much, but they'll be coming out in a sort of numberish format. Um, so if I can just have the um, everyone who's got a flag um, just pass that around here. And then can I just grab a couple of volunteers if there's any, I saw a few kids in the rooms as well, if anyone wants to um, just come with me. Can I ask you to, yeah. can I ask you to describe these people and, and just take them through them and then 
what we're going to show here is basically these people, um, these will be the girls on the day, they'll be coming out of the keynote. Um, there'll be somebody on this floor here who will be directing them out of here. And what they're going to do in a sec when they come back through, you need to hold your flag high in the morning and you're probably going to want to be a bit spaced out in this room because don't forget 25, 30 girls. Um, that will be in one bit, but you need to hold your flag high so they can see both the colour and the number and then they're going to come to you. Um, so when they come out of this room, they come out. Yep, I'm going to direct them and tell them what number they are when they come out. Cool. I'm going to give you a number as you go out to your black four, um, your black seven, your red four. You want to go through red four and Perfect. So that is essentially what is going to happen on the day. <laughs> so um, you will then have your girls in your squad. Now, if you then turn around, and, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, for example, you're standing there and you're like, hmm, I haven't got any girls. I haven't got any girls, or I haven't got the number of girls that I was expecting, there will be in this area. You'll have your stream girl guide supervisor. There's also a hub supervisor that will be in this area as well. And there will be some roaming volunteers on the day with Ask Me stickers. If you see an Ask Me sticker, they can also help you. And um, anyone who's a supervisor, and they'll be identified on the day. We're still kind of working out what that might be. Or it'll be a different colored t-shirt. So obviously you'll be all in black. They might be wearing a yellow t-shirt. They might be wearing a cap or a sash. That's just, we'll confirm that um, in the next week. Um, you need to locate them in this area. Um, quickly grab them and say, hey, I'm missing some girls. Um, and you can take the girls that you do have to your session. They've all got the supervisors have radios. They'll be locating those girls and making sure that they get them to you and making you aware if there is any changes to that as well. Because we should be, we'll be checking that against who actually arrived when they registered and if that number has changed for any reason. <coughs> um, so then what you'll do is once you've got your girls, you'll make your way to the session. So for example, if you're a trade show, go straight into the trade show. If um, you're um, going to the workshop, you'll head to your workshop number on the sheet that you'll have on the day with the room number and the map. And if it's, um, yeah, and if you're heading off to um, a super workshop, then you'll be heading to that potential up lecture theatre that we were in earlier. If your first session is trade show, then you will go straight to the trade show hall um, in the morning. The girls will be coming through the different entrances again and they'll be sent straight into that trade show. So as Alex said, trade show is going to be really fun. Um, so while you're in that in the trade show, again, you can stay in the trade show. There may be, um, you may be handing out some goodie bags, um, we've got show bags for the girls. Um, or if we were only need a couple of people probably to do that um, from, from the stream. So if not, then it could be having a, just making sure that the girls are being COVID safe. There's not loads of people, they are trying to be a COVID safe event. Um, and just making sure that there's no kind of running around, like just basically keeping a bit of order within them because they are going to be super excited in there. I believe they've got some passports in there that they're going to be collecting as well. Um, some, um, some stamps, I think. Yeah. And um, so yeah, just kind of just making sure there's a bit of order. If not, you don't. If, for example, again, as I said earlier, if you did want to just use that as a break where you need to nick out and do something, that's fine as well. So if you need to go to the bathroom. Um, or you've got to make a call or anything. You can do that during the session. But about 10 minutes before the session ends, uh, five, 10 minutes before, there will be an announcement. There's an area within inside the trade show. Again, similar to how you're doing now, in that assembly area, holding your flag high, getting those girls, and then escorting them out of the exit area of the trade show. Um, so that one's pretty similar, but it's just inside that building, which we haven't got access to get into. Uh, at the moment. Um, so yeah, again, there'll be a supervisor with inside the trade show. If, for example, you some, you haven't got enough girls, we will know because we're going to be we'll know how many girls should be in there. 
um, and if they um, if you haven't gotten the all girls you still head to your next session um, and just make sure you notify someone and they'll find the missing girls for you if your first session is a workshop um, now that does start a little bit differently so as the girls are arriving on the day if they're trade show they're going straight into the trade show if they're keynote they're going straight into the keynote however if they're in work their first session is a workshop and say for example that is the pink stream and their first session is a workshop in the morning after you've registered grabbed a coffee and uh, got all your information you need to come straight into this area here because those girls are going to be arriving and coming straight in here and if their first session is a workshop you want to be held um, flag held high again and they will be pointed to into this direction to find their squad so you will have time in the morning a little bit more time to make sure all those girls have arrived if it's getting to about um, 15 20 minutes before the session and you're still not got uh, all your girls then what i probably would say that's the point when you need to be uh, notifying the supervisor that because that particular school might not might be running late on the coach might be running late on the minibus we will know that information potentially as well so we'll be able to get that information to you if we have that information first but if you don't have those girls then there will be radio points from here to those uh, registration desks so we know have they come in and have they gone missing along the way um, so You'll hold, similar to what we did before, they'll come through here, everyone can hold their flags up high um, and similar to how they came through, the girls will then come directly to you and then that's when you'll navigate to your workshop rooms which will be either in the HE, um, where we went earlier, out through those corridors, there's also a level 3 so if it does have HE3 then there's also the one you can navigate up the stairs and through basically the same looking corridor Above. During the lunch break, um, the girls will go off and have their lunch, and then um, you, that's where you can return to the volunteer room. Um, the assembly post lunch, so for example, it will be pretty much exactly the same steps as it would be for the keynote. So, again, how we did that role play, they'll be coming out, um, they'll be um, coming out of the keynote because you might not go in whether you go in um, after lunch or side to side drawing workshop again you'll be down here straight away after lunch to make sure you get them to take them to the workshop and um, super workshop again same above the only difference will be in, is in the trade show so in the trade show um, there is actually an overlap around the lunchtime period so as girls will already be in the trade show from the previous session, there will be a 15 minute window to cross over the girls leaving and the session entering. So um, what will happen is, is that as those, those girls will have already been assembled before that session ends, they'll be leaving. Once we've got those girls out, that's when the girls will be set, going in after the lunch break into that area. Um, so they'll be going in straight into the trade show. Um, so just really kind of, um, be around that trade show entrance area um, at that time just in case we need some help that's probably one thing I would say after lunch just because there is a, a different transition because of them going in and out we just might need some help getting the girls out uh, in a quick form and getting them in um, as well in terms of um, I think as I mentioned before the day is staggered so um, two streams are starting at an earlier time and finishing at an earlier time another two streams are starting at a different time so in terms of how that's working so if for example you're, you're a black stream with a squad in a black stream you'll um, the girls will arrive at 8 45 approximately they probably will arrive a bit earlier it just depends when the coach gets there and um, their first start time is 9 45 so their first session starts at 9.45 and their last session finishes at 2.45. So once the girls have finished at the end of their, those streets, um, head back to the control room because we um, to check out. So that's just more so if there is anything that we might need any help with just for the last part of the day, and um, that's just an area where you'd go and find your supervisor and they'll be able to kind of advise if there's anything or whether that's good to go and um, be to leave for the day. But we do want to just check out just so we know who's still on, on site and who's left. <laughs> if you're pink, then yeah, the, the, the girls will arrive around 9.30 approx. 
starting, their first session starts at 10.30 and their session finishes at 3.15. So it's a bit late, it's about 30 minutes later than the younger girls sessions. Um, some buses and coaches may arrive late in the morning. We, you know, there will potentially be traffic. So that is something that we're, you know, we're aware of, it can happen. So if that does happen and that affects your squad and your whole squad is filled with that one school that is running late, your, we all get that information to you as quickly as possible. So you, at least you know, if you're standing there with your flag in, 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 in high up and uh, you've got no girls, then we can at least let you know why that might be. Uh, there will be radio points between the coach drop-off point, the minibus drop-off point, the registration desk, the hub, the stream supervisors, um, and yeah, there will be plenty of radios that will be happening that if we know that information, we'll get that information to this point here. Last session, yeah. just bring them back out. Yeah. yeah? Um, some schools obviously will have plans to take the girls back to the buses and yeah. we'll be able to your role just to get here. Some girls may have an earlier pick up time than the session ends. So that is something that might happen as well because they've got, you know, we've got girls travelling like from Ballarat and you know, quite far areas um, in Victoria. So some may leave at different times, but that will all be communicated to you um, before and on the day. All the information that you talk about today is that available online so we can just refresh our memory yeah you yeah, you will get all this information right. beforehand um, just so you it will all be on a kind of role description um, and um, yeah that will all be get sent to you within the kind of like I, I think probably about the week before um, so you'll have that for time and then obviously you'll have the information again as a printout on the day and a map you'll get a map okay. yeah We'll make sure if there's any, you've got as much information. If they feel like there's something missing at any time, just shoot us an, a, an email. We are getting to the emails. Uh, we do get quite a few. So, um, yeah, we'll get to the email. We'll, if there's any questions, we'll try and sort that out for you because we want to make sure that you all feel comfortable and know what you're doing on the day as well. So, um, yeah, just feel free to reach out. We're, we're available. So what you can do is queue, queue where we are is... Um, the HE, HF block, and there's actually a multi-level car parking that's yeah. just nearby. I think yeah. it costs a maximum of about $6 a day from what I've heard. Um, that's otherwise, not a bad day, because it says like permit on like those areas. Yeah. Is that like fine for us to... That's okay for us to park though. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, if you pass time. the football <laughs> field, those, those, yeah. I don't think those will be as available to us on the weekdays. Um, yeah, okay. But I think the main one will be the multi-level car parking, which is just behind here these yeah. buildings otherwise there's also I think um, car, park, car parking towards the front of the campus around there's underground parking around building B just outside near Bell yeah. Road um, or if you do want to park elsewhere obviously there's street parking and that, that's the other side of Bell Road so it's just depending on what's convenient for you. What yeah. we'll do is we'll make sure that there's all this information you're yeah. going to have beforehand in terms of obviously the the tram number if you're getting public transport and um, we'll make sure that we'll tell you all the areas of where you can park what you need to do if you are going to park so that'll be on an email I think there'll be plenty of people on hand during the day as well different supervisors so as all girl guides and um, you will all have a supervisor and um, I can see Jennifer at the back is waving, is going to be one of the stream supervisors on the day. So she may be your point of contact depending on what colour and um, flag and stream you're working with. So every stream has a supervisor. Stream, uh -huh. um, so a stream will be the colour. Um, and there will be approximately like 24 squads in that stream. It will be one guide per squad, so each squad. So you'll probably have about 20 to 30 girls, depending on the number. There will be teachers as well, so. <laughs> it's not just the girls, there will be teachers as well. Particularly the younger girls as well, their teachers are going to stay. Yourself as a guide, obviously, getting them through is obviously, as you pick them up, checking your numbers, how many girls have you got? Um, how many, so for example, if you're in the key, come, the first session is the keynote and you're grabbing the girls at the, um, as they come in out, if you, your number of girls does not match the number that 
um, you're supposed to have, there will be supervisors and people on hand that will be able to help track down those girls. So you're, uh, we want, what we want you to concentrate on is getting the girls that you do have to the session and there'll be there will be people around that'll be obviously if there's a girl that's not with a group we're going to be uh there'll be people grabbing them and working out okay what squad are you where do you need to be we'll get them to you the same goes as well for example in that 30 minute trans uh, transfer period if for example you've got some girls that need to go to the bathroom and mm -hmm. um, they'll again there'll be a couple of people outside in that area or where, congregating the areas that you're going to be to be able to help get those girls to that and then you carry on with your group to the to the next session and we'll get those girls back to you but that's something that you don't need to worry about that's for us to worry about if the girls are missing so we'll be we'll have plenty of people behind the scenes making sure that where if there is girls that have for example wondered so it's really just checking them as you pick them up and checking them as you put them in the room because then you'll know if you've lost some girls so each session will go for 45 minutes in length so um, each keynote each workshop etc will be a 45 minute block after that 45 minutes there's a half an hour period where all those squads will need to change over for their next session so we'll be looking to all of you as going on guides on the day to help us take the girls from one session to another within that half an hour window we are definitely looking to try and keep schools together as much as possible. Um, for us, it's about keeping the flow of traffic. As you can imagine, 1,700 girls. Yeah. Um, if we start waiting around and congregating, then it's going to create um, bottlenecks. Yeah, so um, what we don't want is lots of groups of people hanging outside the toilets because um, that can build pretty quickly if you can right. imagine how many girls we've got on the day. So the, the direction from us is that Grab somebody, so grab one of the supervisors, make them aware that, that those girls need to go to the bathroom. You continue taking your girls and they will organise getting some another volunteer to, to get those girls back to your session. So they'll be they'll be volunteers on the day that will be that's gonna be part of their role, um, is to pretty much help assist getting girls back to sessions that have needed to move away from the group for and any reason. Because we are aware there is a lot of flu going around, a lot of COVID still going around as well. So behind the scenes, we are planned for that. Um, so we we know what our minimum numbers are. That's why I think obviously this is going to be your role for the day. But what I would probably say is if there is times where we need to move people around, it could change. The likelihood is for your role as a girl guide, that won't change. That is the most, that's the priority role for us. So to make sure that there is one person per squad is the, is probably the highest priority when it comes to the roles that we've got. So um, it's probably not going to affect you that are here today because everyone who's come here today will be assigned to the girl guide role. It's probably going to be more that it might people's roles may change for in the other roles because they are the ones that we can move around. The only thing I would say is potentially during the session if you are in that volunteer control room and haven't decided to stay with the group if for example we need to because i think i mentioned earlier there is a staggered approach to the way that we're running this it may be that if you're in that room we, and we need someone to run lanyards from one area to another or we need to get the girl to a different workshop we may call on you just to help out and just grab that that girl who's, go, who's gone to the bathroom and getting to the other session during the session. Because it's, it's really, if you're, in the, if you're in the session, obviously, no, but if you've decided to go into the volunteer control room, that may happen if we are running low on numbers on the day, because it's definitely something that we're well aware of is a high risk for us. It will be your first session. So potentially this moment here is the first time you're gonna meet your girls. Um, so if you're if the keynote is the first session you've got, this will be the first time because we're not going to allocate. Obviously, we're not going to allocate the girls beforehand. It could change. Um, so yeah, this will be your first touch point with the girls. You'll see them coming out of there having a great talk to the ANZ, really happy, really excited, and you'll be waving your flag. If you've got any of the keynote workshops, super workshops, there will be the speaker buddies that are on hand and are attached to those speakers, they'll be making sure that they keep on time and uh, to get those girls out of the 
area on time. There's a 30 minute window, which should be enough time to, for you to identify. Everyone should have come out by that point, identify, have I got anyone missing, get, get in touch with someone and get to the next session because most of the areas aren't within a particularly long walking distance. So um, you should have, should have enough time. There's an assembly point to the trade show, so yeah. there'll be an assembly point where you'll just have to grab them, get to the assembly point, and essentially loiter while we let the next group in, and then that, that we have the girls will walk out and separate doors. So we'll have a separate entrance and exit point. But there will be like a speaker, yeah, we will be kind of putting an announcement out, hey, five minutes to go, please get to the assembly point. Um, To those areas but that obviously you're probably looking at at least 10 minutes to kind of just to make sure you've got all your girls and then, then there's the, the 20 minutes to get to the we will have approximate timings that, and that we'll know how long it will take to get to those certain rooms but as you saw earlier probably the lecture theatre uh, that we went to is probably going to be the furthest away um, and that's probably approximately like a five ten minute walk uh, so yeah, they should all be within close enough proximity that the 30 minute window should get you there on time. And um, obviously as your role is to get the girls there on time, if for example, you're, you're getting close to that time and you know that you haven't got enough girls, you know, that's when you need to make someone, uh, your supervisor aware and they'll sort that out for you while you can get the, the girls that you do have to their session. You will, you'll be advised who your supervisor is There'll also be, um, that'll be in your information pack. Also in the volunteers room, there will be a bit of an org chart on one of the projectors on the screen, so that will be up there as well. Um, yeah, and it'll also be on the email um, information that you do receive in advance. So um, yeah, you will know who your supervisor is. We'll also have a picture of them as well, so you know who to, what they look like. But you'll be also be able to identify them because they won't be because obviously you'll be wearing all black, they will have their own identifier which will make you aware. Um, that will either be, as I said, a cap, a yellow t-shirt, or it will be like a sash. Um, so you can see quite clearly from the crowd of people um, where they are. Everybody who's in the girl guide role should be just in this girl guide role for the day. So you won't need to go and do the liaison um, role. Um, the only time um, that you may need to do something is if, for example, you've just maybe, uh, decided to go back to the control room during the session and we just need someone to potentially run something or, you know, um, if there's a lanyard, if some girls haven't got a lanyard, maybe we might need to just ask you to grab them and take them to that closest location point uh, registration. But that's probably unlikely. It's just, that's more a uh, backup when, if, for example, volunteer numbers on the day do drop because of COVID and flu that we need to have those parameters in place. But essentially you'll all be having the girl guide on. It's a super workshop, same thing again with the flags except for as, I'm, as we did on the tour and um, you'll be upstairs so the same thing as what you're doing down here you'll just come straight out the volunteer control room straight to that area there and that's where you're going to pick up your girls. Um, as Jess mentioned in the lecture theatre the, they are going to be running the third, so you will actually be with a couple of other um, volunteers as well. So you won't be taking them just your squad, you'll be with a couple of other volunteers and there'll be a few of you going to that lecture theatre together. Okay, what will happen is, is that when the girls come through that entrance point, we will know from their colour lanyard, the volunteer on that door, if for example the first session for the pink stream is super workshop, we're going to point them to go straight upstairs. That's where you're going to be standing to pick up those girls. Once you have your girls, similar to at the workshop, you'll walk back down the stairs, out the building to the lecture yeah, area. So down, yeah. If there will be also some your supervisor upstairs with you, that if for example you don't have the amount of girls and by the time you need to leave to get them there on time, then um, notify them, they will sort that out. That's, that'll be their responsibility. Um, you just get your girls to where they need to be. And so the girls actually will be across the campus, is my um, Jess. They could, be, they could be sitting around here if it's, if it's nice weather, they could be out with the gardens around the place as well. Um, so it really depends on 
where the girls and then the teacher for those girls will want to go. For the volunteers, lunch will be served in the control room upstairs. For the girls, we've asked the girls to bring their lunch. lunch with them. Oh, they bring their own lunch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And obviously there's, there's food and beverage options yeah. at this camp. Yeah. Jess mentioned earlier as well, there will be teachers with these groups as well. So, um, yeah, they will be with the girls. So it's not like you're going to have full responsibility for a group of 25 uh, girls. There, there's going to be teachers on hand and they will be with those groups as well. There is some strict school rules around food. So um, obviously we're providing you all with food on the day. Um, but if you do decide to bring your own snacks, um, probably uh, nuts is probably what I'd say please don't bring, um, just, um, yeah, because there is usually strict school policies around, but we'll get, have any information about that list if there is anything that we don't want you to, uh, we ask you not to bring because of the, the rules. We are asking all volunteers if you can arrive before eight o'clock for arrive, for an arrival check-in, and the reason being is um, it gives us ample time to work out who, who isn't here. Because uh, that means that we need to put into place uh, backup plans. So if you could arrive at eight o'clock, just for re if there is any issues with timing, please come and grab me or drop an email to the volunteers box um, inbox because um, we will we will try and accommodate. But um, if you are in a girl guide role, um, ideally to have you there. Um, all, all volunteers registered before eight o'clock. That gives us enough time to be able to move people around into different roles. If, for example, um, say for example you're, you're unwell, have COVID, then we need to make sure that we've got we've got another volunteer stepping into that seat. So the, the current government staff recommendations regarding masks is is optional. So it depends on whether you're more comfortable to wear a mask or not. We will definitely have masks and hand sanitizer available if you want to use those but we're not mandating them currently unless you do So obviously some schools may come already with their masks on um, but it is up to each individual person or school how comfortable you are with or without the masks. But we will have masks here if uh, for example you wanted a mask but forgot your mask. You're allowed to take photos on behalf of GoGo. We do ask that you share anything that you take with GoGo, but unfortunately we're not allowed for you to post it directly um, on your own social media. And that one squad you have, so that won't change for the day, that will be your girls for the day, so... Yeah, that's up to you. You probably know if you want to stay or, you know, if you need to not nip out. Like, I know everyone's got day jobs as well, like if you need to make out and make a quick, that's the time when you need to make a quick phone call. Um, obviously just making sure that you're always getting them there on time and um, getting them, picking them up to take them to their session. Um, so you will be making sure that if you're back in that volunteer room that obviously yeah, if you're still there and it's 10 minutes before the end, we're going to be saying, hey, you probably want to head to, to go pick up the girls now. So it's just more so it gives you that flexibility that if you did want to just get a break, um, grab a coffee, you can do that there as well. Or if you have, the workshops will be some pretty interesting workshops. So hey, I, I'd probably recommend staying around and watching some of them because um, yeah, there will be some pretty cool ones. That's just about the end. So on the, on the lanyard for the girls, we're gonna have very similar to this one that you're seeing here, but at the top right corner will be a little white square which will indicate a spot number. So that spot number is unique to them and they're only one of that spot at any time. So you'll be able to identify at the top right which spot they're in. At the bottom left, for the girls and the teacher is a little QR code that we're going to ask um, them to let us know what they think of the day after a few questions and that. And so we do encourage you, if you're in the last session with them and they're just about to head out, let them know that they can provide us feedback and uh, contribute in our first event survey. So there is um, toilets um, down here on, on the inside of this room on the right hand side. I believe there's some other toilets dotted around as well. Um, yeah. So yeah. there's some here that's super workshop that we went into that's more lectable than we went into, so that would be dotted around. You'll have a map as well and um, what we'll do is we'll just note down all the toilet areas as well that you've got from the day options, depending on where which building you're in. There will be people 
available on the data because everywhere taking that information from everyone is who do, do, who do we know is first uh, uh, first day trained. So yeah, there will be. If a scenario comes up that you do need to contact the first aider for some reason, I'll, um, we ask for you to contact your supervisor in the first instance. They will be able to radio. For so every volunteer needs to go to that volunteer room that we went to this morning. That's your first point of call. That's how we register you in and that's where we get all your information. You'll have it on hand, in your hand on the day. and will have all that information. Pick up your squad flag. So you, you need to be able to do that. There probably will be a QR code as well um, with a, just a, a check-in from a vaccination point just because um, that is a requirement as well. The sponsors will check in in the speaker lounge, so that will be cited up the speaker lounge, and the volunteers will be cited up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I think as well, when you all came today, obviously I was checking to make sure that you've applied for your, already applied, done your work on the children's check. I don't think there was anyone here today, which is great, uh, that hasn't got a work on the children's check, so yay. Um, so yeah, if you, if, if you do know, have colleagues that haven't been able to attend today and they are coming and volunteering with you and they haven't applied for their work on the children's check, Please give them a nudge because unfortunately anyone who turns up on the day as a volunteer does not has not applied for it. It doesn't need to necessarily have come back, it just needs to have been applied for. Unfortunately, we are going to have to turn them away because it is a requirement for us that that, that everyone has applied um, for that working with children's check because you are coming into contact with, with the girls. Anyone who's got the, the black or the white strip of protection, I think it's the pink. Pink is the same thing. Pink, pink and um, so yeah, black and white will be years five to six, and then um, pink is years seven to eight, and yellow is years nine to twelve. Some, yeah, they'll come with the schools. So some schools will bring multiple teachers as well. So we're just saying. Always, always need more volunteers. I think this year, just with the fact that, as we've mentioned a few times, um, I hate saying the COVID word, but yeah, there is obviously a few different factors that we're dealing with this year that, yeah, um, I probably what I would say is anyone who, if you do have know anyone who would still want to volunteer, we would need to, um, officially our volunteer registration did close on Friday. Um, but I would, yeah, please, if you can find out that information, I'd say by like Monday, Tuesday, like it's just because the next, we are running this session again next Saturday. Um, and we also are running a virtual for anyone who can't attend on um, these sessions. I do always recommend coming in person because it is a bit, bit of a different experience to what you might see virtually. Um, I think it's really good to actually see the venue. And as some of you might have noticed this morning, you know, that first time coming here is actually no way. That next time you come on the day, you know where you're coming. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that, that's the reason why is that because of like, we do want to make sure everyone's in, had this induction before coming on the day because um, if people turn up on the day and they don't know, it's going to be quite daunting for them. So this is why this we're running these sessions. So that would be the only thing is that if they could attend, know that they could attend one of those sessions and get the information across to us straight away. I'd probably do it on email rather than on the registration form um, and then we can sort that out. The things about this event is that it, it's important and the importance is about what we're doing to inspire the girls and, and see more women into, into the workforce and, and following their dream and it's opening their eyes for their dream. And while today may seem a little daunting, because ICT has done this for a long, for many, many years. I think 2006 was our first one. And um, so we've never had COVID before, um, and we've never had, uh, and we've got the flu as well. But what I would say to you is that just remember that today, while it might be, you might be thinking of all the things, you are the inspiration. So those girls are really inspired by what you're doing. And um, the inspiration is around that our youth 
as, as role models. They need role models. And the Google team are a role model, but don't forget the importance you've got because you're actually making a connection that those girls will never, ever forget. Thanks.